Hello everybody and welcome to another Pixel for Life video tutorial. Today we are continuing along on our Mac application design and for some reason I started off being zoomed in all the way. So if you couldn't guess uh, we are going to be working on the icons. Uh, I created all the icons needed. It was still, I still felt like doing more so I finished off the sidebar which includes creating a calendar. Pretty fun stuff. Take a look. So looking at this shape you can kind of see that it's two parts. One is the frame around the arrow and then the other part is the arrow. So to start off, I just make the frame because then that gives me a basic reference of size for the arrow. And to do this, I just created a box and then created another box within it to subtract from it rather than just doing one box and then uh, a stroke around it. Um, this way it's, it's scalable and also I'm able to use a clipping mask to remove par portions of it. Now to create the arrow, all I do is use the basic pen tool and I just click and drag to create the rounded portions and then just single click to create the sharper edges. Now I draw out a simple box and what this does is erases part of that frame that the arrow is intersecting with. That way you can kind of make out that it's an arrow. And then on this box I use the option at the top called sub subtract from shape and that's going to remove everything that is behind that shape. I was getting kind of confused by the background image being there. So I just move the entire shape out of the way and then hid everything in the background. That way I can send objects to the front or to the back and make them appear or disappear to how I want. So what I did is I have the border in the back and then above that is the subtraction box and then above that is the arrow. That way the box is only subtracting from the border. Now let's move on to the settings icon and that's just a, a simple gear. Now I analyzed it and it's pretty much two portions. The center donut and then a couple of lines on the outside. Very simple. So I start off with a circle and then again I use the same technique as with the box. I create another one that's smaller and use that to sub subtract from the center of it. Now all I do is draw out a two pixel wide box and then rotate it from the center by 30%. And now I have two lines so I select those duplicate it and rotate that and then select all four of those and rotate it again until the entire circle is completed. Now all you have to do is make sure that your layers are merged together and then you'll see that there is no hole in the center. Very simple fix. All you have to do is find that smaller circle that's in the middle. It's all the way in the back of the layers so you have to select it and bring it to the front and then it will subtract from all of those lines. So if you can remember from our first tutorial, these plus signs over on the left side always bothered me. I hated the, the way that they looked. They seemed unsharp and very blurry. So we are going to recreate them. Uh, what I did was just drew out a two pixel radius border, kept it vector, and then just went inside and tweaked it up a little bit. So to sharpen up the edges, all I did was zoomed in very, very close, grabbed the point selection tool, and then just made sure that the edges of the shape landed on a single pixel. That way you don't get that half pixel blur and that really makes a big difference. While recreating the plus sign I got the idea to completely remove the button. I thought it looked a little bit too blocky and was taking up too much of the sidebar. So what I did was just dragged it off of that button, changed the color to white, then I added a slight drop shadow so it stands away from the background. Now I think it gives the sidebar a much cleaner look. Then all we have to do is duplicate the layers and rename the text. And there we go. We have some nice clean buttons on the side. Now I want to add a settings button. So all I had to do was go to our gear icon and then I just converted it to a smart object. So any changes that we do will be reflected throughout the whole, the whole design. And then I dragged it over to the sidebar and added a caption. Now I'm just going to clean up the sidebar a little bit because the layers look kind of sloppy and it was making me a little flustered. And then I also removed the old buttons. So I was watching a movie and I saw this really cool minimalistic calendar in the background and I knew that this would be the perfect place for it. So what I'm designing here is pretty much exactly what I saw or from what I remember. What I like about it is that you get the point of what you're looking at. You, Everyone knows a calendar so you don't need boxes for each individual thing. All you need is just the numbers in your set. So all I do is just use the simple text tool, right align everything, and wrote it all out. My dates are incorrect, but that's just for the design. It doesn't really matter. And I'm also a little dumb. Didn't realize that till halfway done. 
I thought the sidebar was kind of blending together a little too much, so what I did was create a simple three-dimensional line with a dark line on top and a little bit lighter on the bottom, and it kind of makes everything separated and also the line pops and looks modern and nice. This process is very simple, so I'm just going to speed through it real quick. And now I just quickly realign everything since I deleted the mock-up calendar, and it looks very nice. Now to finish off this lesson, I wanted to recreate these plus buttons on the top and what they're going to do is allow you to quickly create a new project or a new task. So I wanted to do something that kind of incorporated it into the page just to show where it belongs. When you click it you know exactly what it's going to do rather than floating off into space. So what I did was just created a quick gray background which kind of looks like a flag and then has a plus sign on it. I did a little bit of stylizing and that's all. Nothing too intense, just keeping it pretty simple. And that is going to finish off this part of the lesson. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or send me a PM. I will get back to you as soon as possible. And stay tuned. Please subscribe because more stuff is going to be coming soon. See you.